soaring, soaring high in the heavens, I feel a thrill divine. And as the clouds go drifting by in the heavens, you whisper. The skies above are blue, you know. So hold me close as we glide up to the moon on the flight of the lost balloon. Revive him. Bring him here. I apologize for having tested you so severely, Sir Hubert. And I wish to make amends. These letters addressed to your friends at the London Geographical Society contain detailed instructions for your rescue. Sign them. Anche, I'll find my own way back. You are my guest, Sir Hubert. I should be remiss in my hospitality if I allowed you to make a journey of 2,000 miles through equatorial Africa in your condition. You must let me help you. I insist. Five months, Sir Hubert. And this packet of letters may earn you your freedom. Yet step by step with undaunted courage, the members of the London Geographical Society, ignoring Ignoring personal privations and danger, have pulled aside the veil of... Good evening, Dr. Faraday. Good evening, Giles. Good evening. Ah. So that's Sir Adam's daughter, eh? Miss Ellen Burton, yes, sir. Oh, Giles, Giles. And my hat, please. Thank you. My notes. If I may say so, sir, you're half an hour late. Nothing Sir Adam likes better than after-dinner speaking. And myself for the discovery of Lake Tanganyika. 
What a time to be late with that beautiful woman sitting next to my chair. I'm privileged to announce yet another milestone in the conquest of this dark and mysterious continent. The penetration of the headwaters of the Nile by Sir Hubert Warrington. How do you do, Miss Burton? I'm Dr. Faraday. We haven't met as... at the headwaters of the Nile. In his honored place on the platform this evening is my daughter, Ellen. I must apologize for being late, but I was held up by... Sir Hubert's fiance. <laughs> we also have with us this evening that remarkable member of Sir Hubert's safari who brought us Sir Hubert's maps and letters. Brought them, gentlemen, through 2,000 miles of trackless African jungle to our very doorstep with the unerring accuracy of a London postman. <laughs> 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 this society has undertaken to act on these letters and has organized a rescue safari for the purpose of bringing Sir Hubert safely out of the jungle. I should, of course, prefer to be in the vanguard of this rescue party, but Due to my recent bout with the gout, the board has prevailed upon me to give over the leadership to one of our younger and more vigorous members. I now give you that footloose and gout-free traveler, fugitive from shipwreck, Tomahawk and War Club, Dr. Joseph Faraday. <clears throat> well, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the London Geographical Society, Sir Burton, and uh, distinguished guests. <clears throat> After a careful study of Sir Hubert's maps and letters, I have come to the conclusion that the proposed safari into the heart of Africa should be abandoned. In place of five weary months of slogging through malarial swamps, cannibal spears, and tearful crocodiles, I propose a five-day journey of ease and comfort in a hydrogen gas balloon. <laughs> the um, balloon, of which this is a scale model, will carry three passengers. I would like to propose that it be captained by our esteemed president, Sir Adam Burton. I accept. I will perform the duties of the navigator, and our third passenger will be our turbaned friend here, who will guide us to Sir Hubert once we reach the headwaters of the Nile. Now, <clears throat> we will start our journey here at the Niger River. The prevailing winds will carry us across the jungles of the Congo to our destination. Once we have Sir Hubert safely on the balloon, we will then continue our journey across Africa and descend at Zanzibar. I um, venture to say, with such a lovely young lady there to greet him, it will uh, be some time before Sir Hubert gives us an accounting of his experiences. Come along, my lad. 
Lads, back to the ship. Move along smartly. I don't think they like us. Uh, you see, they're moon worshippers. They think we're going up to their moon, and uh, that's sacrilegious. What's this? Oh, be careful. Careful, that's acid. Acid? Yes. What for? Oh, it makes hydrogen. Keeps the balloon afloat. Elementary, any school child knows that. How does it work? Well, <clears throat> you see, sulfuric acid added to water increases its conductibility, resolving itself into its two component parts, oxygen and hydrogen. The oxygen goes off by the positive pole, and the hydrogen goes up through that into the balloon. That enough? More. Now. Now, the gases increase 1 480th of their volume for every degree of heat. So, if I turn up the heat on this blowpipe device here... In other words, you light this thingamajig, and it makes the balloon go up. Precisely. I never did have a good head for physics, Doctor. I am impressed. The whole idea of making this flight by balloon is most ingenious. Well, actually, it was um, your fiancé's idea, Sir Hubert. He'd come right out and say so in his letters, but it was sort of uh, between the lines, just sort of screaming for a balloon. That's why your father called on me. Hapana, hapa! Baya, baya! Have you gone mad? That was a three-shilling Havana. Uh, look, uh, Sir Adam, I'm afraid old Bluebeard here was uh, right. Uh, one spark from that cigar would have blown a sky high. Oh, what a bore. He thinks more of that ready balloon than he does of a good cigar. Uh, well, how's the unloading going? Oh, that's what I came to tell you. The men are bringing off the last of the supplies now. Oh, well, good. We'll start attaching the basket to the balloon. The sooner we're airborne, the better. I don't feel too safe around here with careless Englishmen and uh, sullen natives. Well, wait till after dark when they start beating their drums. That's when they're really unfriendly. Yes. when you're safely on the boat to Zanzibar. You'll find it a bit more civilized there. It is a bit primitive, isn't it? And it was even more so ten years ago, when I was through here on my safari to the Congo. Hubert was with me. <laughs> you and Sir Hubert must have explored half Africa together, single-handedly. Wait, wait, not It'll be a proud day for me when you two are married. For you too, I dare say. Buana likes the lady in balloon. All right, thank you. Probably ready to leave. Can't say that I'm sorry. Besides, the barometer's been falling. Probably in for a bit of weather. Say stamp paper. Oh, what a bother. Si si nequenda, sasa. Here we go. Thank you, Dr. Fess. Oh, you should have climbed up here. I was just going to come down and say goodbye. I'm glad you did, though. I didn't come to say goodbye. Oh? I came to thank you for what you're doing. Risking your life to save Sir Hubert. Oh, well, saving explorers for beautiful young women is a hobby of mine. I suppose this is silly, but do be careful. I have a premonition about this trip. What could be safer than swinging in a hammock, hitched to the stars, while the world turns under you? Don't 
beasts, no bugs, no bunions. It's not the beasts and the, the bugs that I'm worried about. It's it's swinging in this hammock with Blackbeard, as you call him. <laughs> Bluebeard? <laughs> well, he's not exactly my choice for a traveling companion, I admit. But uh, without him, we have no hope of finding Sir Hubert. Oh, that must be Father. Well, I'll leave you now. I'll be waiting in Zanzibar. Good luck, Doctor. Be too hasty in releasing the gas, my dear doctor. You'll have us all in the river. By what right have you caused this balloon to be launched? By the right which my indispensability confers. You see, I am the gossamer thread by which you will find your way through the labyrinth of the jungle to Sir Hubert Warrington. Kill me or leave me behind and you break the thread. I don't wish to minimize your importance, my dear doctor. Without you as navigator, I should never be able to land this young lady at her destination. And what is my destination? Don't be alarmed at the prospect of your unexpected journey. The same thing happened to a young barmaid named Fontaine. The young lady accomplished the journey all the way across Spain and into Portugal. And no one died of it. Well, as soon as we descend, we're going to have an explanation. Descend? With that storm approaching? Better to ascend, I assure you. Let us not act rashly, for Sir Hubert's sake as well as for your own. And ballooning accidents have always been the result of rashness. De Rosier made an ascent on the 13th of June, 1785. He had a Mongolfier apparatus similar to your own. More crude, perhaps. All the same, it too was a torch under a powder barrel. He opened the valve too quickly and his balloon fell on the Mongolfier apparatus. He was blown to pieces by the explosion. Shattering, was it not? Well, it's been a long day. I, for one, am going to get some rest. I suggest you two do the same. Shreds if we try to descend in this storm. By the time it subsides, we'll be too far inland to make it back to civilization on foot. No, I'm afraid we've no choice. We're committed to a trip across Africa with our friend here. Well, Father always says there's nothing like a good Indian guide for travel. Well, the doctor always says nothing like a good night's rest and hard day. Cozy, that's fun. he going to do about us? He has some bizarre scheme in mind, but that scheme is, I don't know. Do you believe his story about Sir Hubert and the island? Well, the signature on the letter seemed genuine enough. Now, it's strange about that letter. Sir Hubert has never had any interest whatsoever in balloons. Oh? Our 
friend seems quite well informed about them. I wonder if perhaps... Ah, good morning. Sunrise over the jungle. Magnificent. Oh, there is the village to Umba. The natives are running away. They must be frightened of us. Soon they'll recover from their fright. The chiefs are armed with muskets, and the balloon makes an easy target. Oh, dump the water over the side. We can get some more later on. Can a bullet hole bring us down? Well, that depends. The balloon has an inner as well as an outer fabric. The bullet would have to pierce both of them in order to bring us down. Oh, we've risen out of range of the muskets. Across the mountains are many freshwater streams where we can replenish our supply. Isn't that the Congo River? Yes, that's right. Ah, and that clearing by it is a perfect landing place. Oh, it's splendid palms. Yeah, those are coconut. It's the only plant in the world supplying all of man's basic necessities. Food, warmth, shelter, and clothing. It looks so quiet and peaceful down there. Yeah. Don't be misled. There could be a thousand cannibals beneath those fronds, and you wouldn't see one. It was among these very trees that the unfortunate Frenchman Maison was murdered in 1845. He was captured by the cannibals of the region and tied to the foot of a giant cocoa palm. And the savage chief cut him slowly, limb from limb, and then literally tore the half-severed head from the body. Maison was only 26. Cheese? Mm. Later, thank you. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Please. <laughs> 
few fresh coconuts and uh, we'll be on our way. Oh, please, Doctor, let's ascend quickly. I have a very uneasy feeling about this place. Oh, no, that's another thing coconuts are good for, that uneasy feeling. I'll be right back. Cannibals, take the balloon up. Wait, wait. One shot and all will be lost. Be quiet, make no sudden move. Basi, Sisi Mwezi, Sisi Mungu, Wewe Enye Wazimu, Wewe Neshima, Sisi. Isn't this an excellent time to make our ascent? We will be more prudent to wait. I have told them that we are gods of the moon and that we have descended from the heavens to honor their village. The Malkia, their queen, is very ill. They believe we are the answer to their prayers for assistance from heaven. They want the gods of the moon to make medicine for their queen. Well, all right. Tell them we'll go, but you'd better turn up that blowpipe in case you have to make a fast retreat. Indio, Sisi Nakuja. Glad they didn't leave Bluebeard behind. At least he can't strand us now. I think it's you he wants, not the balloon. Otherwise, he wouldn't have maneuvered to have us cut loose with you in Sir Adam's place. Well, let's hope we stay alive long enough to find out. Do you really think we're safe? Have no fear. We are protected by their superstition.
Vaquilla, vaquilla, vaquilla. They're all trying to give you a diagnosis of the Malkia's illness. The witch doctor is especially concerned if he will be buried alive with her if she dies. That sounds like fun. Well, shall we have a look at the patient? Yes, well, I'll um, take a look. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Is she dead? Dead drunk. She's absolutely spiff located. Uh, do they have anything like black coffee around here? Leite Kahawa. Oh, I have some smelling salts. Oh, well, good. Let's try that. Any port in a storm. passes out again. Well, I'm afraid we can't. Now she's calling for you. Tabasco sauce.
This orgy may well be her last. Perhaps we'd better get the moon back up in the sky before it's missed. Wait. Something's amiss. They're calling the natives to stop us. Well, let's not wait to ask questions. Come on. and they know we're imposters. You sure you wouldn't like to stop for some coconuts? This is no time to make jokes. sure it's tipped with a deadly poison. How convenient it would be. You could rid yourself of me and at the same time rid yourself of Sir Hubert, which I'm sure would suit the two of you at this moment. But you won't. Western honor prevents you, doesn't it? your hammock in the stars. It's lovely. See the moonlight in the jungle? Mm -hmm. It's eerie looking out there and knowing that Sir Hubert is somewhere over the horizon. Ellen, um, can I ask you a question? Of course. I notice that you always call him Sir Hubert. It's true, isn't it? I don't know. I, I suppose it's because I've always looked up to him so ever since I was a girl. I used to daydream that someday I'd grow up and he'd fall in love with me. See? Joe? Hmm? May I ask you something? Anything? I suppose I ought to know the answer, being the daughter of an explorer, but... What is it that makes men like you and father and Sir Hubert devote their entire lives to danger? Challenge, discovery, <laughs> curiosity, and unwillingness to live with anything less exciting, I suppose. Like a woman? Asking me what made Sir Hubert plunge into Africa on the eve of your wedding. Well, some men are overtaken by their destiny in spite of themselves. <laughs> that was for being so chivalrous. Don't always count on my being the perfect gentleman.
Victoria. It's Lake Victoria. The headwaters of the Nile. A fatal barrier. Yet from here, it looks so placid. Are you familiar with this part of the lake? Perfectly. Sir Hubert Warrington is on that island just ahead. By George, we scored a bullseye. We should land directly on that island. The winds are most favorable. Uh, don't congratulate yourself prematurely, my dear doctor. You see that flock of birds rising from the island? Yes. They are condors and of the largest size. How they scream. They regard us as intruders with no right to fly as they do. They may attack us. Well, if they should. No, no, you mustn't. It will only incite them to tear at the balloon. I have enough ammunition. But no, if they, if they attack the top of the balloon, we are helpless. Let's try and get above them. Hmm? must leave the balloon so that the other two can survive. Well, nothing like an early morning dip. Joe! Try to understand, Golan. His tongue was torn out years ago. Mm -hmm. Be assured, Miss Ellen, no effort will be spared to find the good doctor. I myself will stay here and organize a search party. Oh, do, please. You must be tired. My castle is across the way. My men will take you there. Everything has been arranged for your comfort. The young doctor. Search every cove on the mainland, but find him. My plans are in danger as long as he is alive. 
go. Excuse me. You're lovely in oriental dress, my dear. Is there any news of Dr. Faraday? Not yet. But by now, the boats have reached the mainland and my men are searching for him. Golan is an excellent tracker. You may be sure he will find the doctor. I pray you're right. What of Sir Hubert? Here in the castle, safe enough. I'm just on my way to tell him of the balloon's arrival. When he finds that by a strange accident, Miss Ellen Burton arrived with it. Did I arrive by a strange accident or by your design? Design or accident, what matter? I'm sure Sir Hubert will find your presence here in the castle more to his liking than that of Sir Adam. I certainly find it so. When there is news of the doctor, you shall hear of it immediately.
Consider the successive emigrations of the human race, and you will arrive at the same conclusions. Asia was the first nurse of the world. For 4,000 years, she was fruitful and bore her children. Then, as she lost her abundance, her children left her dried and withered bosom for the younger and more fertile fields of Europe. For 2,000 years, Europe has nourished them. Today, she too is losing her abundance, and the people are throwing themselves on the richer bosom of America. In its turn, the newer continent will become old. Her forests will fall under the axe. And Africa will become the great kingdom of the world. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Precisely, my dear. What about Egypt? Surely the Nile cradled civilization at one time. It seems you're coming about to Africa a bit late. Or don't you consider Egypt important? I consider Egypt the most important of all. As Sir Hubert will tell you, we have spent many interesting hours in conversation over Egypt. Did you know that Cleopatra visited the headwaters of the Nile during her reign? Interesting. No, I hadn't heard it. Look. Those ruins near where the balloon landed attest to her visit. There are carvings in the stone which indicate that she... But forgive me, I must be boring you. No, to the contrary. I find your philosophy very interesting. Only time can prove you right. It already has, my dear. You see, your doctor is a very good swimmer. He has reached land safely. It's only a matter of time until my servants find him. I must go now. But let me warn you against wandering about the castle. There are many dangers. Come with me, Golan. No matter. He cannot enter the castle alive. Well, for the moment. That big fellow with Bluebeard has been trying to kill me all day. Have you seen Sir Hubert yet? Not yet. I think they're on their way to him now. Come on. these doors around here, one could get lost. Let's try this way. Ah, Sir Hugh. I'm happy to see you're still alive. I'm sorry. I cannot return the compliments. You still refuse to tell me? I still tell you I don't know. Let us begin again. Do you deny having a chest of jewels with you when your boat capsized in the lake? I have never denied it. I told you. 
Those were cheap imitation jewels, trinkets, beads that every safari coming to Africa has to give to the natives. So you did. But while I was away, some of my servants recovered some of your novelties from the bottom of the lake. Examine this, if you will. Does it look like a novelty for the natives? Genuine diamonds, are you? Mounted in pure gold. Cleopatra's signet. Do you still deny having found her treasure? Answer me! And not get the secret from me. The balloon arrived today from London. And with it, a visitor who may loosen your tongue. Miss Ellen Burton. <laughs> that is why you had me sign that packet of letters to bring you. Oh, what a joke. What a monstrous joke on you, my dear sir. We shall see how you laugh when we put her to the torture. You thought to take Cleopatra's treasure from me with the threat of torture to her? <laughs> yes, my dear sir, I do know the secret. I know the secret of Cleopatra's treasure, but you shall not tear it from me. Never! <laughs> the girl means nothing to me, a means to an end. Sir Adam Burton's daughter, I courted her so I could get Sir Adam's support for my journey. Now that I have Cleopatra's treasure, I no longer need Sir Adam or the girl. <laughs> you have blundered, my dear sir. And you will blunder again. And when you do, I shall be free. Free of you in this accursed place. And I shall go back to England. The richest man in the world. You don't believe me? Bring her. Bring her here. Put her on that rock. Torture her. Brand her. Pull out her fingernails as you've done mine. From me, you'll get nothing. Nothing! We shall see when we put her to the test. The same in her courtyard. Yeah, we gotta find a way out of here before we can rescue Sir Hubert. How did you get in here? Well, it's a crocodile mode, and I don't recommend that as an avenue of escape. Look, mm -hmm. isn't that an outer door? Let's take a look. I warned you of the dangers of this castle. These chains are very old. If he should break them... Uh, I'm sorry. I've gone to great lengths to bring you here. It would be a tragedy if anything were to happen to you. You will be more careful in the future. I was just searching for Sir Hubert. That will no longer be necessary. I will take you to him now.
Hubert. Oh, I'm so sorry. What has he done to you? All right, then. I'd like to unlock your manacles, Sir Hubert. But then I can't afford another blunder, can I? Sir Hubert feels I've blundered in bringing you here. I, of course, am of a different opinion. Why have you chained him to the wall like some animal? Why did you bring me here? What do you want from us? You will recall our conversation after dinner tonight of Egypt and Cleopatra? Yes. During the great naval battle of Actium, Cleopatra brought Antony reinforcements of 60 vessels. Then in the middle of the engagement, suddenly Cleopatra took flight. Antony left the battle and followed her to Egypt, pursued by Octavian. You're wondering what all this has to do with your question. Well, on Antony's death, Cleopatra gathered up all her vast treasure and again took flight, this time up the Nile. Octavian pursued her as far as the third cataract and turned back. But Cleopatra did not stop until she reached this island. It was here that she was bitten by the viper and died. She was only 38. The secret of her treasure died with her. I still don't understand. For 2,000 years, the lost treasure has been a legend among the natives. When I discovered the ruins of Cleopatra's temple, I took over this island and the castle. For 13 years, I have been searching. But it was not for me to discover the treasure. Sir Hubert found it. He was making off with a canoe full of gems when my natives surprised him on the lake. He has only to reveal the location of the treasure. If he does not reveal the location, I shall be forced to torture you until he does. He's mad. There is no treasure here. I'm sorry you were dragged into this. I, I can't help you. My hands are tied. Hmm. Very well put, Sir Hubert. Who says the British have no sense of humor, eh, Golan? In the morning, you and the servants will move the torture rack there in front of Sir Hubert where he can see better. I shall leave you alone now to reflect on your course of action. You must have a great deal to think about. Come, my dear. I warn you, I will have the secret or Miss Ellen's life. The choice is yours. Good night, Sir Hubert. Escape. Is there a way out of this castle? Yes, but there are gorillas, Jim. Mm. We'll have to find a way past them in the morning. How well do you know this island? Too well. Yeah, well, then. Uh, come here. Now, the balloon which brought us here. No more. No, anything should happen to me. God knows how to work the stove pipe. And uh, see, the prevailing winds will carry you as far as Zanzibar, where the British are expecting you.
an ingenious device. It was the Greeks who first introduced the rack. Then the Romans took it from the Greeks and added hooks for tearing flesh. But it was in Spain where the most efficient models were developed. This is one of the best of the Spanish models. Slow, painful, and most effective. Let me show you. We've reached the moment of truth. Are you ready to tell me where you found the treasure? I cannot tell you what I do not know. Oh, Hubert, please, if you know, tell him. There is nothing to tell. I do not know. You do know, and you will tell. Put her on the rack. This is your last chance before I abandon Miss Ellen to the tender mercies of Golan. Very well. Carry on, Golan. And if the gallant Sir Hubert changes his mind, you may call me.
do decide to go away. You and Ellen make for the balloon. I'll stay here and decoy Bluebeard. Please, you must go with us. Once they discover we've left the castle, they'll make for the balloon. I'll delay them long enough for you to, to warm the gas. It's gone. I know. Get the blowpipe started. I'll bring ballast. the flame high, more ballast. Treasure all the time. Two years in a dungeon, suffering the 
tortures me. Damn it, I thought of nothing else. to let me die for them. What greater glory than to die for the eternal gods of Egypt? How many innocents have sacrificed their blood on this ancient altar of vices? How many young hearts have felt the exquisite joy of the plunge of this jewel dagger? Cupid, oh, let's leave this place quickly. And leave without the crowning glory Cleopatra herself. The sarcophagus. I've got to find the sarcophagus. You could come away, really. The balloon. Get away from me. It's got to be here. It's got to be here somewhere. Oh, thank 
heaven we're safe at last. Oh, it's been quite a morning. Where's Sir Hubert? He's dead. He died a horrible death in the treasure room. He knew where it was all the time. Scott, we'll never make it over the mountains with all this. Come on, hand. we got to get this stuff out of here. we three are destined to travel together. Only this time it is I who wish to descend. Those jewels are mine. Very well. Here. We've got to clear that mountain. Everything over the side. Quick. Everything? Everything. Not a small string of pearls like these. Even a string of pearls like these. Every ounce counts. Well, in that case... Wait. Downhill all the way now. Oh, look, I, uh, I'm sorry about all those jewels, but you see, for every ounce of weight in a balloon, it, it takes a cubic displacement of air equal to what have you got in your mouth? Mm. Hey, come on. Where could we find a stone like that? In Piccadilly. <laughs> <laughs> 